Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ant Mechanic Workshop and today we're going to be quickly talking about reverb tanks. So, uh, anytime in your in your amp um, that you have a reverb that's not working quite right, if it's getting noisy or most of the time just stops working altogether, one of the easiest things that you can check is the reverb tank. Now, if you have a, a tube driven reverb in your amp uh, and you have some spare tubes on hand, sometimes it can be worth swapping out um, the driver and or recovery uh, tube just to sort of see because those tubes can go bad and depending on how it's uh, set up in the circuit uh, everything else can work perfectly fine but uh, you know there'd be a problem with, with one of those tubes or one half of those tubes uh, so, so that's one thing that I see very often but something that's even more common than that usually when reverbs go dead it's because of a bad tank or cables leading to the tank. So this is just going to be a, a quick way that you can go about testing these because uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of good information. Well, there is some good information out there on this, but uh, people seem to make this wildly more complicated than it really is. Um, so the way that this tank is set up, this is the input. Input is actually uh, stamped on the outside here. So this is the input of the tank. So this would come from the send of the amplifier. This is the output of the tank. This would go to the return or input. Um, of the amplifier itself. So on your input side, normally this side is going to be the lower resistance. Now these tanks, when you look up the specs on them, you'll see them quoted in uh, as, as the impedance. So impedance you can sort of think as AC resistance. So it's much more complicated for us to, to be able to do that than to test for DC resistance because basically all you need is a multimeter to check for DC resistance. And basically your DC resistance is just going to be a lower value than the, than the AC resistance in this case. And basically what you're measuring is going to be the re resistance across um, this coil here. And there's one at each end you'll see. And that's a, basically a transducer. So we'll start with the input. Uh, your black probe goes to the sleeve of the connector and that one would go there and you can take that clip off and measure it right on there if you want or you can measure it here. I sort of recommend measuring it here because sometimes uh, it gives you a chance to check these wires because I've seen sometimes these will just break off and it's as simple as soldering them back on. Um, but if you got no value here you might want to want to check the, the, the posts there. So we measure this one and we see it's about 58 ohms just under so that would be acceptable as long as you have some type of resistance here and it's not uh, an open loop or no resistance at all probably that transducer is fine so probably the input of this tank is fine um, with a lot of the older fender amps the tube driven reverbs uh, you know they're set up for an 8 ohm uh, input so you might only see like one ohm uh, or even just under one ohm on on your meter that's okay though so that's probably probably good if you start seeing values up you know around one two two k like anything over that uh, very possible that that could be bad but again you know there's lots of different types of tanks out there you'd want to check your specs and uh, if it seems like it's a fairly high um, impedance on the input then you know you can expect a higher DC resistance value but I don't think I've seen any that are over uh, 1k but you know mileage may vary okay so we're gonna do the same thing on this side over here which is our output side and we would expect to see a higher value here, but what do we have? Oh well. So then if we found that there, we'd want to make sure that our wires are attached well, and they are. And you could even pull this connector back and actually test right on the transducer itself, and it's the same thing. So we pretty much know that this transducer is bad, and basically you need to replace the tank. That's the simplest and easiest option at that point. So one other thing I will mention is if you have a, a stock reverb tank, more than likely it's probably uh, Accutronics, which is owned now by uh, Belltone, I believe. Uh, and I have to say that I see a lot of fail failures with their, their tanks, um, and oftentimes if I'm going to swap them out, I get a mod uh, reverb tank, because I don't think I've ever had to replace a mod reverb tank in in any amp. Maybe one over the years, but... Other than that, uh, they're pretty much bulletproof, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know why, whether it's just better quality transducers or uh, what it is, or just they pay better attention during assembly, but they seem to just last longer, so uh, 
yeah, I guess that's about it for reverb tank. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask and uh, I'll try to answer them if I can. But uh, other than that, that's how to test your reverb tank. Really, really simple task that you can do with even a very, very cheap multimeter.